So we've heard IBM's chairman talking about the impact of cognitive on um, business in general. I'd like to talk about the way that impacts finance. Um, could I get an, sort of an insight into how you think cognitive might impact finance in the future? And as part of that, define what we mean by cognitive. So, um, so cognitive is um, essentially computing technology. This is looking at unstructured information. It's understanding that uh, information. It's able to reason uh, based upon that information and ultimately it's actually learning. Mm -hmm. So it's enabling you to have a much more sophisticated way in which you can draw insights from that information and then use that information. Yeah. And today about 80% of our data is dark to computers. So if you think about the power of unleashing data, this is what cognitive is going to be able to do. Yes, look at Can you give us an insight as to how you think cognitive is going to develop in the future in finance? Sure. Um, so, so the development of cognitive in uh, finance in a, in a number of areas, um, we very much see this as a way in which the banking industry is going to be able to provide a significantly better quality experience to its customers by truly understanding what it is that they require and kind of match up against that in terms of the portfolio products and services that they're able to offer. But it's, 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 it's not just that. I mean, in, in addition to that, it's going to be truly transformational to the industry because I think what it's going to allow the industry to do is to get to a completely new paradigm in the, in the productivity, the efficiency of the industry, enable them to get their cost structures down to where they need to be to compete in the kind of economic environment that they find themselves in. Yes, yeah, so I mean, we see it as a journey, right? Because I think um, one of the things to realize is you can't just suddenly land at a cognitive bank. There's a journey to go through, both in terms of really getting your processes in line, getting your data and your analytics to the point where then you're ready to be able to um, deploy cognitive technologies to start to create those insights and those outcomes. I mean, let's give a couple of examples because I, I think that'll help. So, uh, you know, with the Royal Bank of Scotland, uh, we, we decided, you know, one way we could improve the customer experience was to have a digital agent. So that digital agent, we uh, rolled it out with a thousand staff. Mm -hmm. uh, they went from there, they're going to deploy it to 10% of their customers. And it will <clears throat> let customers essentially ask uh, questions that they might have either on a mobile phone or online. Okay. And uh, if, if the uh, computer can't resolve it quickly, it will know to pass it on. So, you know, from a customer experience, all that will be seamless. Okay. I think the other thing this is doing as well is it's, it's really extending uh, digital in the industry and making it truly end-to-end. -end. Mm -hmm. Because what the banks have spent a lot of time on very effectively is around the front end the different applications and the different channels by which customers can actually access the bank. Yeah. What's necessary now to provide a truly digital experience, a kind of Uber equivalent type of experience, is to make sure that it's end-to-end -end digital. So you know, if you apply for a loan, you get answers immediately. And a lot of the customer, ba customer base is looking for instant gratification. Mm -hmm. So I think as Ian says, you know, if you ring a call center and you then find that you're being handed off between different people because the call center employee doesn't know what the answer to the question is or you get a very bad quality of response, that is not part of that kind of digital experience that banks are looking for. Okay. And I think to build on the point you made earlier also, to get the true productivity gain as well as the improved customer experience, you do need to do the end to end. So I think the learning is, if you only think about it at the front end with the client, whilst you might to incrementally improve client experience, you also aren't driving the full productivity gains that the banks so need today. Okay. So, it's re so it's really at three levels. You know, it's, it's, you have the customer experience, um, you have decisions that are being made inside the bank. Mm. You know, it could be making an underwriting decision, a credit decision, um, and then you have the operations, right, that you mentioned, right? Yeah. So you're trying to make the operations much more efficient because the banks have to, right? Sure. I mean, it's a, it really is an imperative uh, in some countries, particularly Europe right now, yeah. uh, that they drive down their cost income ratios. Okay. And I think looking at it in that kind of way is really important because the, you know, the financial implications here are very profound. Um, um, they, they are truly significant because if you, if you look at a lot of the research around the impact of digital, the impact of fintechs, the impact of uh, disruption that's happening in the industry, mm -hmm. I mean, there's a kind of expectation that almost 35% 
or banking industry profitability is going to be disrupted by all of these factors. Yeah. Now, I think if you bring digital together with advanced analytics and cognitive in the kind of journey that Sarah was describing there, you know, we strongly believe that the banks can make more than make up that 35%. In fact, we believe they can, they can improve profitability by up to 45%. Now, what's interesting is a significant chunk of that comes from aspects around productivity and efficiency that Ian was talking about there. Mm. Okay. And do you think that the concept of cognitive is well understood by the industry? Is maturity level even across the industry? I, I, don't, think it's, I don't think it's particularly well uh, understood within the industry. And, and I think the other aspect of it is, um, you know, notwithstanding the fact that data is by far and away probably the most significant asset that the industry has got and also an asset that's not readily available to some of their competitors, especially the fintechs. Mm. You know, there are not a lot of banks who would turn around and say to you that they really take full advantage of that particular information. So I think as they look at it, they're still worrying about what are the sorts of things that they need to do in order to be in a position to really start to take advantage of cognitive. Now, I think, again, the point I, you know, I think all of us would make here is if you, if you look at the environment they're in, the financial challenges that the industry is facing today, I don't think um, taking advantage of, of cognitive and really leveraging the data is any more a kind of nice to have. They have to do it mm -hmm. if they're going to get back to levels of return that's going to be acceptable to shareholders. Yeah, you asked if, if it's well understood. I, I think in some domains it's, it's reasonably well understood. You know, it's, it's an area that's um, being, being um, experimented with uh, and they're trying the market uh, application of the technology. Uh, it's certainly true in customer experience. There are other domains that uh, cognitive is very helpful in that, that are not necessarily talked about a lot. So security would be a good example.